We've got a lot of important information that we're going to be sharing that hopefully will be very helpful. Uh, I'm going to talk about some other things just for a couple minutes to give some stragglers the opportunity to get in. But, you know, everything that I talk about, I think is pretty important. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about state testing. And I don't know if that's come across any of your uh, screens or chats or whatever. But so as you, you may or may not know that uh, the federal government has said that all states are required to do state testing. And the most states have applied for waivers. And you might have seen some stuff in the paper because there was a lot of articles about the Messina School District applying for a waiver to take the state test. Well, every, every, every state, you know, our state, the New York State Commissioner of Education, we've applied for a waiver. It got denied, but she is going to, she's still trying. So the, the hope is that that will get approved. But as for right now, we're going to try, we're, we're going to be required to do state testing. And we don't really know what that's going to look like. Um, and there's the first test is supposed to happen in less than a month. So that's just, just wanted to give you a heads up that we're not sure. And as, as soon as we have any information about that, we will get that information to you. Uh, the one piece of this that we have been assured, you know, these tests um, with all the inconsistencies as far as instruction across the state, you know, these tests are purely just going to be used to kind of check in and see where kids are at there. There's no grades. There's no placement. There's there's no nothing besides just, you know, looking at Johnny's test and seeing how he's doing in different areas. Um, you know, so there's just there's really no there's no concern. There's no worry. Uh, and as we get information, we will give the information out to you. But right now, you know, we. That's, that's all I have. And I'm happy, you know, if you want to call me or email me personally to chat about this, I'm happy, Jess, Miss Blair and I are happy to have any conversations with you about that. But, you know, that's on the, the state test front. Um, as, as I talk to administration across the state, the different school districts, I think we are very, very, very fortunate in the system that we came up with at the beginning, in the fact that all of our students have Chromebooks and have access to Wi-Fi. You know, I just, I kind of live in a little bubble up here because I just thought everybody kind of was in the same spot we were. They are not. There are lots of school districts where the kids don't have one, all one-to-one -one devices. They don't have access to internet. You know, I don't, I mean, it's been a challenge as it is for us. I can't imagine not having those staples in place for us to be able to try and, you know, help your children grow and, and move forward. Uh, the second piece of information that I want to give with you, give to you, is that we do have, you know, if your children in are struggling in either ELA or math, we have some of our AIS teachers last period uh, every day have open Zooms that they can provide support for either one of those. And if you are interested in, you know, more specifics as to how to get to that extra support, and your child doesn't have to be an AIS student, they don't have to be, you know assigned to those classes. It can be for any case students that, that we want that are struggling in ELA or math. There's extra support for them at the end of the day from our AIS staff, um, as well as we, have, we do have the tutoring every day that goes on from 12 to two. Um, and that information has been posted out several times on Parent Square. it's on our website. If you are interested and you're not sure how to get to either of those two supports, please feel free to shoot, you know, Mrs. Blair or myself or Mrs. Van Warmer, or Mr. Freeman or any of the case staff uh, an email and we'll get you that information. So that's enough blabbing from Mr. Taylor. It's time to get to the meat and potatoes of tonight's meeting. So I am pleased and proud to present back to you, Mrs. Van Warmer. If any of you joined us last town hall meeting, you know, she talked to us about mindfulness and just kind of creating a, a sense of calm to try and help uh, adults and children get through this. And we also have Mr. Freeman, who is on, these are our two guidance counselors. So your children, depending on their last name, are assigned to one or the other, uh, but they do quite often see all of our children. So, you know, I'm happy to turn the show over to them. Take it away. All right. Okay, so before, before we get our presentation up there, we just wanna make sure we mailed home some papers in the mail that hopefully all of you received. Uh, basically three different color sheets, a pink sheet, a white sheet, and a green sheet. 
Um, so it has a lot of the information that we'll be going over tonight on these sheets, a, a letter that actually contained this um, date for our town hall meeting and a four year plan just for you to have to, at your fingertips. And we know that getting this information to you is uh, a lot of information all at once. So we prepared really a condensed and very short and to the point um, presentation tonight, but we know that may not always answer all of your questions. So if we will open it up at the end for specific questions, something that we didn't cover. So we appreciate your patience with that. And then if you need something more individualized, of course, you can call our offices and hopefully um, between Mr. Freeman and myself, we can answer your questions. Or if we need to connect you with your child's high school counselor next year. And isn't that a just a scary thing that we are already talking about your kids going to the high school? And it's hard to believe, I think many of us are sitting here thinking, where did this school year go? Where did this last year go? Uh, I guess in thinking that we're sitting here in a pandemic that it would drag and go slow and it's gone incredibly fast as a lot of the kids have said themselves. Can't believe that we're already, you know, looking at March right around the corner here. So we appreciate everyone who came on tonight. Um, looks like there's a good fair amount of parents and we know you're taking time out of your personal lives to spend it with us. So we'll um, do our very best to give you the information that will empower you. So we're gonna share our screen and put up our PowerPoint. And One just last gonna, thing. We're gonna start by just talking about important points and what kids need to do. And I wanna let Go everyone know Freeman. before we share our screen, is that uh, we're, we are recording this session tonight and then we will post the presentation on our website. So don't feel you have to write notes down fast and furiously because you can access it right from the school website beginning tomorrow. So I'll share our screen and we'll get started. And what you'll probably notice as we get going with this is if you have older children, it's gonna look very similar to graduation requirements of your older children, but I know some of you sitting in the audience tonight, this is your first baby coming through. So this is gonna be a lot of new and exciting information. So um, we're here to help you with it. We're here to help you enjoy this time. It can be stressful, it can be exciting, um, it can be sad. It feels like when they go to the high school, they're no longer as, as young and little, but uh, believe me, every phase of this process is gonna be a great time for you as parents. So what do our students need to do to graduate in the four years we have at the high school? Well, let's talk about that by looking at what are the graduation requirements. So students between the uh, grades typically of ninth and 12th grade will need to complete four years of English and get four credits. So what happens with high school classes, if it's a full year course, meaning they take it every day from September until June, it's considered a full credit. If it's less than that, say if it's a half year course, it would be a 0.5 of a credit. So when I talk about credits or years, sometimes they're interchangeable, but if you have a specific question for us at the end, we'll be glad to answer that. So that four credits or units of study in English equals four years. So they'll be taking English each year at the high school, as well as social studies. They'll need four years of social studies, which equals four credits to graduate. For math, a basic requirement for graduation is three years of math, as well as, as you can see on the screen, three years of science. So I think that's all really good information for you and any of your children that are sitting there with you to know how many years these kids will be taking some of these subject areas. Foreign language is a minimum of one year of high school foreign language, and we'll, we'll get to some other um, changes with that later on. Physical education, as the completion of two full units of credit of study, basically physical education is taught on an every other day schedule. Therefore, at the end of the year, it amounts to a 0.5 of a credit. So you can see that they need physical education for all four years in order to have the two credits needed for graduation. So all of these credits are earned by the end of their 12th grade year. Some students will earn credits earlier than that, but this is just sort of a general guideline. Fine art credit, which could come in the form of um, band, chorus, um, 
studio art class, music in our lives, a specific technology class, and an acting class. Uh, they will need one full credit or one year. Some of the classes are 0.5, which means they take two different classes in order to add up to that one full credit course. So with that, it's a total of the 22.5 or 22.0 with some electives in there, meaning things that they can choose to take. And that's the graduation requirement as the, the um, total uh, units of study. On the next screen, we're just gonna quickly talk about Regents exams. Now, um, Regents exams are still final exams. It's just in these cases, they are crafted by New York State. Uh, they arrive for students to take, they're very secured. They're not developed by the teachers, they're developed by the state. So, you know, they are just a little bit different than what kids will have for final exams here at Case Middle School, where those exams are usually, um, they're developed by the department here at Case. The Regents exams are coming from New York State and students around New York State typically take these Regents exams, and I know we're not in a typical year, all at the same time on the same date. You will have five required New York State Regents exams and to complete. One will be in the area of algebra. Another is in an area of science. There is the global studies, which is at the end of 10th grade. Regents exam, and that's a two-year course, so they begin global studies in ninth grade and end at the end of 10th and followed up at the end of 10th grade with that New York State Global Studies Regents. In social studies, they will have a second Regents, and that's going to be in U.S. history, which is in 11th grade. So they'll take that U.S. history Regents in 11th grade. English Regents is typically in 11th grade as well. And with this, you'll need to pass the five exams that are above uh, with a minimum of a 65 or higher to earn you your Regents Diploma. Um, and again, these are very general and there's a lot of, you know, kids are sometimes like snowflakes. So we have kids and students with different needs. There are some safety nets built into this system for students with IEPs. And we can answer some of those questions either individually if you wanna give us your office a call, if it's your specific child, or if you just have a general question at the end. There's also an option for an advanced Regents Diploma. So for the advanced Regents Diploma, there's additional Regents courses and exams that will need to be passed. You will add on to the math requirements with also having to pass the Geometry Regents which would typically be in 10th grade, and then the Algebra 2, which would typically be in 11th grade, unless you're already taking Regents courses here at Case Middle School. So those are two additional math Regents exams, and then they'll need to be a second lab science. So for example, if in ninth grade, your son or daughter takes living environment, lab course Regents at the end, they would need to take another Regents science with a lab in order to fulfill the advanced regents diploma requirements. They're still going to be taking the three years of science, but at least two of them have to be at the regents level with also containing that lab requirement. Last uh, but not least is the um, three credits of the foreign language that would be required for the advanced regents diploma or a five credit sequence in either art, music, or tech ed um, which students can sometimes get that through their BOCES program. So those are just some of, again, basic general requirements for the Regents Diploma. And then we add it on just for your information, the Advanced Regents Diploma, and that is gonna be your more challenging diploma to achieve. So for our college bound students, that's one that we like our students to really put in as their goal. And there'll be additional courses and more expansive courses and AP courses and edge courses through JCC and a lot of other things that will come as opportunities later on in their high school years, which their high school counselors will be meeting with them and probably as well with you at a later date. We're just really trying to roll out some information so that you can sort of get um, the first step in that big picture tonight. Now, the next thing that we often get questions about are what's the same and what is different about going to the high school? And this is my first year at Case Middle School, and I've previously been at the high school for 24 years. So I know a little bit about the high school, and I'm learning an awful lot about Case Middle School. One of the things that is the same is really ninth grade has a teaming concept. 
And it, there are some similarities to that, but there are also differences with that because um, the teaming in the high school, they try to, it's more about the teachers being teamed than really the students. The teachers work with the same students in the areas of English, math, social studies, and science. And they meet on a daily basis to talk about students. And so the students don't necessarily travel together all day long. And when they go out to physical education or some of the electives or those fine art classes, they may be in classes with 10th graders, 11th graders, and sometimes even 12th graders, depending on what a student's individual needs are. One thing that is drastically different at the high school, which is why Mrs. Van Wormer talked about the units of credit those are Carnegie credits that students have to earn. And you only earn a Carnegie credit by taking that course for the prescribed amount of time and passing that course to be awarded the credit. And so you've got to have those 22 units of credit as a minimum. We often have many more, many students earn more than the 22. And so, but the 22 is a basic foundation and that is set by New York State. So whether you're at Watertown or Carthage or General Brown or, you know, at a suburb of Rochester, the graduation requirements across New York State are the same. And you only get promoted to the next level by earning the appropriate number of credits. I think it's four and a half to move from ninth grade to 10th, nine to move from 10th grade to 11th grade. And then you've got to have a minimum of 14 um, I think it is to go from 11th to 12th. And that still then leaves about eight credits. Uh, maybe you've got to have 15 because that would leave seven credits for your senior year. Most students never end up in that predicament because if you gauge it right, you earn five and a half credits a year and you're right on track with a 22 minimum. And often we get, is there homework at the high school? Yes, there is homework. Sometimes not every day. And then sometimes there are long-term assignments, uh, particularly in the English program where you're working on essays and really crafting some writing things. So there is homework. Math will almost indefinitely have homework every day. And grading works pretty much the same, I believe, as it does at Case. Um, passing is a 65 and failing is anything less than that. A couple of things for students to strive for in the high school because the high school really starts a blank slate for students. And that's why I wanna talk about these last four items because I think they're really important for students to think about, for parents to consider because the high school, moving to the high school and transitioning there gives a student maybe who hasn't applied him or herself as much as they could. We see that sometimes very bright students just don't apply themselves. But one of the things that they can strive for is getting on the honor roll each quarter. That's every 10 weeks when a report comes out, report card comes out. And there is also the honor society, which is available to juniors. And you've got to have a 90.0% overall average or higher. 89.9 doesn't work. They don't round up. And you also have to have, in addition to, to um, scholarship, you've got, you've got to be trustworthy and um, citizen. So those are some critical things for honor society. Attendance is crucial because that is what helps students be successful. There is no big secret to success in the high school. If students are there every day, unless they're truly out ill, they should have no problem at all passing high school because teachers go over it. Teachers are there to assist students that, that struggle sometimes. Sometimes it's just one particular subject or content and a few extra minutes with a teacher can make a difference. But if you miss two or three days at a time, you're always playing catch up. So I encourage you to really, really, unless your child is, is ill, to keep them home, but send them to school otherwise. The last thing I wanna talk about, which is, which is very important, and people often forget this. Um, throughout high school, this is where a student's course history or transcript starts accumulating. And that is um, what is part of the permanent record. And when I say permanent, it means forever. And so students think, oh, I'll, I'll boost my GPA and your GPA is your grade point average, which takes into account all of the courses and the grades that they've earned in high school. And so some students that they think, oh, I'll just, I'll do well my senior year and boost my GPA. It doesn't really work that way when you have all of those classes 
And if you've gotten 70s and 80s because you didn't feel like working that hard in ninth or 10th grade, and then you start to get some upper 80s and you want to pour on the steam your senior year, those 70s and 80s really pull a student's GPA down. So it's one thing to say, I'm going to, I'm going to do it later, but the best thing is to step forward, put your best foot forward and start off really planning down the road that this is my permanent record. What I do goes onto my transcript and sometimes employers request to see that military recruiters request to see that. And of course, colleges and community colleges must see that in order to admit students. So that's important to keep in mind as students transition to high school because it's a fresh start and they should get off on the right foot. Then I wanna just talk about our process for this year. Because of the pandemic, we are in a slightly different kind of scenario because we just can't meet with all of our students as we would have normally. And um, some of our students are totally virtual. Some we're trying to see when they're there on their hybrid days, which is two days a week. And sometimes it's tough to pull them out of a class because it's a question, do they need to see me or are they better served in English or math class? And so given what's going on right now, Mrs. Van Wormer and I will look at the child's progress this year. In ninth grade, there's not a tremendous amount of selection. They have to have English nine, global studies nine, um, either pre-algebra or the algebra regents level, and uh, then their science. And uh, if a student is taking eighth grade science this year, they'll move on probably to a living environment. If a student is accelerated this year in living environment, they move on to earth science. And for the math, we typically use around a, a 75 as a, as a benchmark. And if a student has 75 or higher, typically they'd go straight into the algebra program. If it's under 75, then um, we would maybe look at pre-algebra. These are just generalities and any parent who has a concern about maybe what Mrs. Van Ormer and I select, just give us a call because it's a very fluid process and we want students to work at their highest level without the frustration. We want them to have a successful time in high school. And, but we just need to wrap that up by June 1 as I have put down there so that we can get things into the master schedule. Um, so then, as I said, all students will have English 9, Global 9, Math, or Science, or Living Environment, um, the foreign language, unless a child is language exempt, typically Phys Ed, and Band or Chorus if they're currently participating in that. So that's typically a, a ninth grade schedule, and there may be some, some changes and nuances to that as we move along. And also on the website, you'll find our course description and prerequisites. I didn't wanna include that tonight because that is just really overwhelming. And I think the basics that we're giving you could give you enough to think about. Um, but in that are some extensive links to educational resources and um, SED is the State Education Department. BOCES is our Board of Cooperative Educational Services, which also has the technical programs that students usually enter in 11th and 12th grade. And then there also talks about appeals and safety nets when students, if a student is unable to pass one of those regents exams, there's some, a lot of variability in that depending on every student's circumstance. And so um, I'm gonna click on this link, which is an interactive link. This is something new this year, the high school has put together. And I'm just gonna show you just like two things in there. Again, this will be included in um, our presentation and the recorded version that'll be on our website tomorrow. But I just wanna quickly, quickly click on this and the high school counselors will give you a welcome as soon as I get to their page. Mm -hmm. My name's Miss Winkler. If your last name starts with H-E through M-A, then I will be your school counselor next year. I'm so excited to get to know you and work with you. We're gonna have a great year. Now we're gonna go meet the rest of the counseling office. Come on. Hi, Miss Murphy. Hi, my name is Miss Murphy. If your last name starts with A, B, or C, then I will be your school counselor next year. And you're gonna love it up here. I can't wait to meet you. And now we're gonna head over and get to meet Mr. Carbone. Hi, thanks Mrs. Winkler. I'm Mr. Carbone. I'll be working with students last name D 
D through HA. We really look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Carbone. And over here, we have the face of the counseling office. This is Mrs. Bates and Mrs. Chrisley. Say hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Mr. Elliot is over here behind Mrs. Chrisley. Hi, Mr. Elliot. Hello, everybody. If you have the last name MC through R, I will be your school counselor. I look forward to meeting you and working with you next year. See you then. And right across the hall is Mrs. Hughmaster. Hi everyone, I'm Mrs. Hughmaster and I'll be working with those of you whose last names begin with the letters S through Z. Can't wait to meet you. Excited to uh, work with you next year. Bye. All right. Take care guys. Bye-bye. And that is just a, a small portion of that. Everything that you saw that was highlighted there are links to all kinds of things in there. So it's a, a very good resource and it's not just for, you know, eighth grade moving into ninth grade, but I think students will need to refer to that throughout their high school time. So that's gonna be a great resource as it's available as will their high school counselors, also fantastic at what they do. And then if you have any questions about contacting any of us, here are our office phone numbers and also our emails which in the breakdown of our last names, if you didn't catch those. So the email is just our first initial with our last name and followed by at watertowncsd.org. So I hope you found this somewhat helpful tonight. And um, I'm gonna see if I can end my share. And we are back. So I hope you found that somewhat helpful and planning, but it really, the next four years are important for your child and it's hard to think, yeah, they're growing up. And if you thought middle school went fast, the four years of high school will go equally as fast. And so, you know, we want them to have a solid foundation. That's one of the things I think we put in the letter just because um, education has been so different for the past year that you know, there's gonna be some gaps in some of our students' education and, and we want them to be as successful as possible and be as prepared as possible for when they reach the high school so that they have a good, good foundation and they can go into their college or career or military service depending on what his or her choice is upon graduation. Thanks for attending tonight, everyone. So I just wanna wrap things up by uh, thanking Mr. Mr. Freeman and Mrs. Van Warmer for giving up their time this evening to kind of help share some information with you guys. You know, please, as always, reach out to us. You know, if you have any information about tonight's presentation, it's gonna be posted, like Mr. Freeman said, everything will be posted on you know, our website tomorrow. If you have any other issues, reach out to the office, reach out to the teachers. We are here for you. You know, I think the Watertown City School District is really doing an outstanding job in a very challenging time to try and help give your children, you know, all the support they can to help them move forward. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. This was a great turnout. Let us know if you need anything. Otherwise, hopefully we'll see you around. Have a great night.